Hello everyone, welcome to my three-part tutorial series on how to make an accurate gravity simulation from scratch using just C++ and the library SFML. So if you're not familiar with SFML, go ahead and watch my beginner tutorial series on it. You can uh, find that link in the description, as well as this boilerplate code we're starting with right here. It's also going to be in the description so you can get uh, right up to where I am here. Uh, what exactly this code means and what it does is discussed in the beginner series, so if you watch that, you'll be up to speed. If you already know what SFML is and how it works, then you shouldn't need uh, an explanation on this code. So, here's my plan, right? We want to make an accurate gravity simulation. So we're going to work on two classes. Uh, so the first class is going to be a gravity source, and this is going to be attracting particles. And the second class is going to be a, just a particle itself that can be attracted by a gravity source. So let's get started here with the gravity source class. So we're going to want a class, gravity source, and I'll actually make this a bit bigger so you guys can see that easier. And we're going to want a constructor for this class as well. So we'll go ahead, public, gravity source. And what arguments are we going to pass in? Well, we're going to want a couple things. We're going to want a float, probably the, the position, position x, and a float, position y, as well as a strength. Right. Um, we also want to, you know, a strength of the, the gravity source. Right. How how powerfully, how you know, how much is going to attract particles. In other words. So, now that we've you know passed those in there in our constructor, we're also going to need the actual member variables to set these. So for member variables, I'm going to start with a couple here. <clears throat> uh, so an obvious one is going to be we need a position, right? And I'm actually going to merge the position. These two we're going to set up. We're going to end up setting with just one vector using these two. So we're going to use the built-in SF vector 2f. We'll call it position. And vector 2f is just a built-in vector of two elements, uh, x and y, which are both floats. Uh, it's built into SFML. You can just use like that. So, so the next member variable we're going to go ahead and create is strength, of course, float strength, just like that. Uh, and that, that should be good for now. We'll just go ahead and set these. <clears throat> so we'll go post.x equals post x. I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate that. And then I'm just going to change the x's to y's. I'm going to control D again to duplicate this, and this time I'm going to copy the strength over, paste that in both those places, and we're going to have to go ahead and go this uh, <clears throat> self-reference our member variable here just to make sure that C++ actually sets our member variable strength equal to the value passed by this function strength. Just That's just a little thing about C++. So now we want to render this. Of course, we want to draw this on screen, <clears throat> and the way we're going to do that is we're going to actually create an SF shape within our gravity source object. Uh, we'll do the same with particle, but we'll start here. So we'll have SF circle shape. I'll just call it um, S. Why not, right? Uh, and now we might want to set a few attributes about S, right? We've got we're creating it with this uh, this class, right? But we haven't set any attributes, so it's just going to be a white circle in the top left of the screen, right? Because we haven't even set its position yet. We've only set the actual position of this vector two f. Anyways, right after this other code. We'll go ahead and we'll start with the basics, right? We'll set this circle to set uh, position, right? And we'll go ahead and just pass in posts. There we go. Set the position. The next thing we'll do is we'll set fill color. Uh, I think by default it is white, but let's just be explicit. SF color white, and we can change that later too then. All right. Uh, the next thing we'll do is we'll set the radius. So S dot set radius and uh, we'll just go with like four for now uh, we can change this later again right so once this is all set now we're gonna need some some functions right so let's think what are we gonna be doing to this gravity source we're gonna be getting a couple things we're gonna be rendering it to draw it on screen and also we're gonna need to get the position of it as well as the strength of it um, by our particles you know wanting to know how they should calculate their next velocity and such so we're gonna make a couple variables just to, to get that the first one we'll go is we'll go with render. So avoid render, so actually just drawing this thing on screen. To do that, we're gonna need to pass in a reference to an SF render window, ampersand, I'll just call it wind. And what we're gonna go ahead and do in this function is simply wind.draw s. There we go, so you're gonna draw the shape, pretty straightforward. The next function we're gonna want is, uh, well, we're gonna want to get position out of here. So I'll just copy this here for simplicity, SF vector 2f. So what our function is going to return, and we'll just call it get position, and um, well, we'll just do the full thing like that, and then we're just going to return position. That simple. Uh, and the next thing we're going to do as well is we're going to need strength as well, right? So we're going to float get strength, and we'll just return strength. 
this may seem kind of like a waste of time, but it's just kind of object-oriented programming um, convention. And it's good to learn, and, and it becomes more useful as you make larger programs too. So I think this gravity source class is pretty good to go at this point. Let's go ahead and make the particle class. So a lot of stuff is going to be the same. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just copy this entire thing. And a lot of this is going to be similar, right? So you can copy that, paste that in there. But what stuff are we going to get rid of? Well, first of all, we don't need the strength of the particle and we don't need to get the position of the particle. So we'll delete those. Render still going to be relevant. Uh, circle shape still going to be relevant. <clears throat> uh, and a lot of this stuff is still going to be relevant. So what's going to be different, right? Well, not only are we going to have a position, right? Because our gravity source is going to be fixed. That, that, that's just, you know, kind of given by the simplicity of this tutorial. Gravity source is going to be fixed. However, the particles are obviously going to want to fly around. There's no way getting around that. So not only are we going to need a position, but we're also going to need a, uh, a velocity. So SF vector 2F uh, velocity. We'll just call it velocity. There you go. Why not? Um, and we'll just call it vel, <laughs> just so it matches posts. Uh, and also, I realize we don't need strength. We don't need strength. So um, our constructor here is also going to want to include now the velocity because not only are we going to want to set the particle's position, we also might want to launch it kind of initially, right? So we'll go ahead and do that. Again, I'm going to you know save some time here. Just copy and paste the the float position x position y, paste that in there, and we'll change that to vel x vel y. And also the strength here, we can delete that. And uh, I'm just gonna grab both of these, position X, position Y, again, copy that, paste that down there. And we're just gonna replace all these posts with vel, all right? There we go, just being efficient with our time here. Got that all set up. Uh, and now we are gonna need one more thing as well, right? We're gonna need a couple things. So we're actually gonna need to update physics, right? Because we're not updating the physics of the, um, the gravity source up here, but our particle is gonna need to, to update physics. So we'll go ahead and write this function real quick. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a void, right? It's not gonna return anything. We'll say update, oops, update physics, just like that. Uh, and it, it, what's it gonna take in? Well, it's gonna just take in really uh, a gravity source. We want to update physics relative to, right? So there's gonna be a limitation as well here, where we're only gonna be able to really update it correctly for one gravity source, which is fine, and it can totally be extended for more. But just for now, we're gonna keep it simple and just pass in one gravity source. So. We're going to pass in a gravity source uh, reference. Definitely pass in a reference. Don't waste yourself copying the whole thing. Uh, just like that. Because we're not, we're not going to be changing it, right? And in fact, since we're not going to be changing the gravity, we're not, we're not making any changes to it within this function, we can just uh, declare this const and save the compiler some, uh, some time, some cycles. So let's have a look at this. I think this is pretty good for now. We've gone ahead and created a gravity source. Uh, and actually, oh, we need to name this as well. Whoops, particle. I almost forgot the most important part. Uh, and then rename our constructor here as well, particle. There we go. Now we've got our particle class, we've got our gravity source class, and these are ready to do some math with. So in the next episode, we're going to go over this update physics function, and we're going to be we're gonna physically accurate to Newton's laws of motions and figure out exactly uh, how this update physics function should work. It's going to take a bit though, so I'm not going to include it in this video. I don't want it to be too long, um, but you can check the description or the end cards of this video for the next episode, as well as the final code that we've got right here. So I just want to thank you guys for watching and hope you have a great day. Talk to you all later. Bye.